You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. LSU spring game was this past weekend. It ended up being a fruitful recruiting weekend as well for the Tigers. Our buddy Shay Dixon joins us here on Tuesday. On three, the Bengal Tigers. Shady, how are you, man? I'm doing well. How are you, Matt? I'm doing awesome. So when you uh, look and totally encapsulate the past weekend, a commitment from a uh, four-star running back, you had Bryce Underwood back on campus, a whole bunch of other commits on campus, the Corey and Moore uh, pledges. He's a 1,000% committed to LSU. How would you uh, rate the, the weekend? as a whole recruiting for LSU? A success. Uh, and certainly, look, a lot of other spring games were going on, so for them to be able to get uh, the amount of visitors that they had on campus, especially key ones, uh, was big. And I think you start there, right? J.T. Lindsay, you get a new commitment coming out of Alexandria. We've got him ranked uh, as a top 150 prospect, number 11 running back in the country, and a top five prospect in Louisiana. Uh, and LSU had been had an eye on him for a while, uh, obviously has have been pursuing James Simon, uh, another a top 10 back in the country who's also from Louisiana, and then have a commitment from the number one running back who's from Louisiana in Harlem Berry. So uh, I thought it was really only a matter of time. Uh, James Simon, conversation aside, whether he ends up at LSU, that Lindsey would land an offer, and then they would maybe take at least two, if not three, backs in this class. And this one's earned. I mean, he went out and ran a 10-7 on Friday night uh, up in Scotlandville uh, on the track, and he put it together on the field with a guy who had nearly 2,000 yards rushing and 28 touchdowns, and everybody over uh, in the Alexandria area has been screaming uh, that, hey, look, college is this guy's a star. And he had picked up some offers, but LSU was his first big one, and he wasted zero time. Mm. He said, as an Alexandria kid, this is one you grew up wanting, and committed to the Tigers, and now they still, on on three, have the number one recruiting class uh, on the industry. They're going back and forth with Ohio State. So uh, they've got a little competition here for the next six, seven months as to who will finish number one, and I think the race will come down to LSU or Ohio State. Shay, you mentioned Simon. Do you think LSU would take three running backs in this class? Yes, I do, if it were James Simon. Okay. Right? You've got three top 11 running backs in the country, all in Louisiana. Um, but now you've got two of them committed, and James Simons and currently right now on campus at Notre Dame. He's in the middle of, a, I think, eight stops over two months, and then official visits would probably come. So uh, he's still got a ways to go with his process. Obviously, they felt like, hey, we like Lindsey. If we offer him, he'll probably shut things down. And uh, Frank Wilson usually reads things right in that regard. It only took him a few more days to come back. Uh, the campus with his, his parents and shut it down and get it done. Um, if you're watching or listening live and you want, got a question about a prospect for Shay, you want again, you can email me, tweet me, or text me in the 225-396-4400-396-4400. Shay, with the portal opening today, before we get back into the high school guys, with the portal opening today, uh, anything in particular you're keeping a keen eye on as it, as it relates to, to this spring window with, with this cycle? I mean, I'll take Brian Kelly at his word because in this situation, it is one that I think everybody who follows LSU football closely can see, and it's that they haven't needed a defensive tackle. Uh, and yes, you can wipe the slate clean and hire all new coordinators on that side of the ball, and you can, um, what, at this point, install a new defense, add guys from high school, um, you know, take a Juco guy in Sean Washington, but when you only return two scholarship DTs and only one of them, Jacoby and Guillory was out there getting consistent first team reps. It's obvious that they have to address the defensive tackle position. And Brian Kelly came out and said it after the spring game that he considers defensive tackle to be the position he has to address uh, more than any other. Didn't even name another. So uh, that is their focus. And look, he said that after they've already landed one transfer this spring in Wisconsin's Gio as a defensive tackle. So I would expect, uh, Matt, from talking to sources, that they're going to add at least one more, probably two more, but they've got to beef up the trenches. They know it. They lost Mason Smith and Jordan Jefferson and Wingo, who were all the guys that you know kind of really contributed a year ago beyond Guillory. So that's the focus. Now, I think anything else beyond that is, what do you want to address a need position? Is Do they view it that as a 
a corner. I don't know. Uh, they've got a lot of guys in those rooms. It's just a matter of who it's going to be. Uh, if Trey Holly is on the team, Matt, I think running back is one that they don't necessarily have to address because yep. uh, it seems that they're okay with four. I'm kind of watching, and I know no one really cares about it, but punter. And mm. it, after the spring game, Kelly didn't seem very high on the performance they had, at least during the game. Uh, and for, what, two years, we just saw Josh Gr- or Josh Groudon, uh, Jay Bramplett come from Notre Dame, the guy who had played for Kelly, and then carry Kelly through those first two years in terms of being the punter. Well, he's gone now, so will it be Todd, or do they get active again at that position? That's what I'm kind of keeping an eye on. That's a good point, uh, and that's putting it mildly. I mean, Brian Kelly said point blank he's that he thought Peyton Todd had an opportunity to go win the job, and he didn't do that. He wants him to be more consistent, so it's definitely a competition. Uh, he's on Twitter at Shay Dixon on three, the Bengal Tiger. Hey, I wanted to ask you, um, you mentioned secondary as well. I want to talk about DJ Pickett. Who, uh, Shay, I know, is, is he going to play corner at the next level? And, and I know he was here. Can you give us any update there on, on Pickett? Yeah, so uh, Pickett was in town uh, this past weekend uh, as part of that big kind of five star visitor weekend they had. You mentioned Bryce Underwood, Harlan Berry, uh, two of their commitments that are five stars were in town. Uh, they had Khalid Lockett, a five star receiver, who's the number two receiver behind DeCorian Moore, who they already have committed. Uh, on campus with Underwood and Barry, so that was big. But on defense, yes, Pickett was the headliner. And he had originally been ranked as a safety, but LSU and many other colleges were recruiting him at corner. Uh, And I think at this point, everybody in the industry looked at it and said, okay, this is a guy we should probably move uh, and rank his corner. So he went from the number one safety in the country to the number one corner in the country uh, (laughs) and ranks within the top five uh, right now on on three. So uh, yes, they are very much in the mix. Uh, Corey Raymond recruited him at Florida, so obviously he's kind of picked up where he's left off. And I'll note that and this doesn't have to happen often. Corey Raymond gets hired, what, and they get rolling mid-January. He and February is all a dead period. Pickett's already visited LSU three times. He visited in January and March and now in April for the spring game. They're the team to beat, if not tied for the team to beat. And I think that I feel pretty good about saying that now. I don't think he's committing tomorrow or anything, but it feels good if I'm an LSU fan to say, okay, Corey Raymond's back, and these are the type of guys that we're really in the mix for, which is 6'2 and above, long, can run, and in this case are ranked very high and a five-star. Shay, it's pretty obvious when you look at LSU secondary the last two years, just the guys running around out there don't look, just physically don't look like the guys, how they used to look when LSU was, yeah, that great, decade-long run under Corey. Um, can you elaborate just a little bit? Because Brian Kelly mentioned this post-spring game as well. On Cor- He was asked about Corey and Bo Davis. And the way Brian Kelly said it was, we've had guys in here the last three months that don't look like guys that we've we've had there the past couple of years, meaning recruits. Um, can you elaborate just on, just in these, these several months here, Shay, what adding Bo and Corey has meant to LSU's, you know, this recruiting uh, class for 2025? I mean, I think it, it, first off, it gives you an obvious veteran experience, and that's not a knock on Robert Steeples, but that was his first college coaching job, and it's being cornerbacks coach at LSU. And then you go back to a Corey Raymond, who has been here, he's done it. He's coached for more than a decade at LSU. He was the longest tenured member of that staff uh, whenever Brian Kelly showed up, and you know, obviously shook things up and, and kind of brought in his own staff. Uh, so he's got the experience. Bo Davis has done it at Bama, Texas. Now he's back at LSU. He knows all of that. But I think beyond that, they, because they've been around so long, they understand types. And Corey Raymond, for better or worse, right? And often for better, because in this case it works. But look at a Corey Raymond. It's Six one, six two, or above. It's long arm guys who can turn and have proven track speed. And even if you're not that huge guy, you're Dante Jackson. You can make up for it with what the fastest speed on the field. So I think they kind of got away from that for a bit. And now that they're kind of Corey Raymond's back, they are now taking the approach of you're seeing these types of guys come on campus who fit that bill. Whether it's DJ Pickett or Dorian Brew, these are kids with track backgrounds who have height and length and, and obviously uh, can man up, which is kind of a big priority for him For him, if you can't play man and, and really get physical with the guy and then keep with him when uh, he goes vertical on you, then you kind of 
don't get an offer. Uh, and I think that's kind of where we're at right now. And I think LSU will trend back towards having those type of defensive backs that they're used to having and are used to watching at least. A couple more for you here, Shay. Um, was uh, anybody else in this weekend or other prospects worth keeping an eye on that could pop here uh, soon? You know, I think that JT Lindsay we knew after he got an offer that it probably wouldn't be long. Um, now I think we're in the spot where we're watching the defensive line because Bo Davis is at a spot where they don't have any defensive linemen committed yet, but he also put together his board. He's had a ton of guys in. Uh, the guys at LSU was recruiting before he got here and now are almost like 75% different. And I think, again, LSU went however many years, Matt, with a new D-line coach every single year. So you never built any relationships with guys before you moved on to the next coach. So uh, I think he's got some connects from Texas that will end up paying off. I think they'll end up landing some defensive linemen from Texas. I just don't know when these dominoes will start to fall. But uh, now that spring practices are, are over, uh, what, May or next week, they'll be out on the road during the eval period. And then in May is when the official visits start. So I bet by May they've added a few more guys to what is currently 12 commitments, and they want to shoot for typically 25 to 30. Well, Shay, my last question was going to be about the timeline, but you just kind of punctuated it there. So uh, fruitful weekend for the Tigers and uh, onward for this class of 2025, which is shaping up to look really good. Shay Dixon on three, the Bengal Tiger. He's on Twitter at Shay Dixon and good enough to join us here uh, every Tuesday. We appreciate it, Shay. Thanks, man. Yep, we'll catch up again next week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.